Hello everyone, today I will be walking you through Lab 5 of Physics 2212, Faraday's Law. The purpose of this lab is to observe a magnet falling through an aluminum foil cylinder. We will compare this scenario with an ideal computational model. Finally, we will understand how Faraday's Law explains a generation of current in this particular situation. The physics principles at play are magnetic flux, which is the amount of magnetic field passing through and normal to an area, Faraday's law, which correlates voltage with the time derivative of flux, and Lenz's law, stating that an induced electric current creates a magnetic field that opposes the change in flux. The main physics model used in this lab is visualized to the right. The falling magnet creates a changing magnetic flux at the ring, where the cylinder is made up of an infinite stack of such rings. In this case, d flux dt points downward. Lenz's law states that the magnetic field due to the induced current must therefore point upward, meaning current flows counterclockwise viewed from above by the right hand rule. The magnetic force can be found by I delta L cross B, where B can be found using the Biot-Savart law. We can derive the final force expression to be current times 2 pi r times B times sine of the angle between magnetic force and horizontal. The procedure includes first recording the physical properties of the aluminum foil cylinder, such as length, wall thickness, and inner radius. Then drop the magnet down the cylinder, north pole first. Finally, measure the time it takes for the magnet to reach the bottom, and average 5 trials. In the experiment, my magnet took 1.5 seconds to fall, though this value is computationally predicted to be 0.33 seconds. Why are we not using a ferrous tube? Iron has ferromagnetic properties that interfere with the effects of Faraday's law, so it is critical that our cylinder not contain iron. The measured and known properties are as follows. The aluminum foil cylinder has a length of 0.3 meters, a width of 0.005 meters, an inner radius of 0.025 meters, hence an outer radius of 0.03 meters, and a resistivity of 2.63 times 10 to the negative 8 ohm meters. The magnet has a mass of 0.023 kilograms and a magnetic dipole moment of 2.1 amp meter squared. To the left are my recorded observations for every trial, whose average is 1.25 seconds. Let's ask, what happens to the magnet? How does this compare to a magnet falling in free space without a tube? The magnet appears to float, falling slower than in free space. This is because the net downward force is of less magnitude as the cylinder applies an upward force on the falling magnet. Using the Glowscript IDE and vPython, let's model our cylinder, or tube, and magnet. The tube is a list of ring objects, with position, radius, thickness, current, flux, and resistivity properties. The magnet is represented as a cylinder with a property for the magnetic dipole moment, mu. We can calculate the magnetic field at any location given a magnetic dipole moment using the Biot-Savart law explored in Lab 3. To calculate the derivative of flux with respect to time, we can implement a variation of the Biot-Savart law that takes into account the inner area of the ring normal to the magnetic field. Finally, we can perform a simulation of the magnet falling down the tube. Inside a while loop, we must check if the magnet is in the tube. Then we can iterate across all rings to find the net magnetic force on the magnet. Summing this with gravity, we can use Newton's second law to find the magnet's acceleration. Then we update the magnet's position accordingly. The last step in the loop consists of plotting the magnet's position and velocity at that moment in time. Shown is the program rendering and the generated plot. The rendering confirms our setup, where the magnet starts at the top and falls downward through the tube. On the right, we see that velocity is always negative and decreasing, so the net Y force is always downward. Note that at the end, velocity decreases more than usual, since part of the magnet is hanging out of the tube. To reflect on this lab, let's ask, what if the resistivity of the conductor were reduced as close as possible to zero? How would the dynamics of the falling magnet change? Current and resistance are inversely proportional, so current would grow in magnitude. Hence, the magnetic force would grow in magnitude and the magnetic would fall more slowly. Also, what if holes or slots were cut into the tube? How would this affect the ring currents in your model? The cylinder would contain less hole rings, so there is a weaker magnetic force acting on the magnet, allowing the magnet to fall faster. Thanks for listening!